adjacent extremities of the visible and invisible portions of the lines drawn from A. The slope above the line just drawn is visible from A as high as the crest of this ridge. Don't work too late, Charles. I'll be through in a minute. There's not much to do. No, worse luck. See you later. So long. Good night, sir. Good evening, sir. Great extra, store new standard. Store new standard, late extra. Store new standard, late extra. Late extra. Charles. Hello, I thought you'd gone home. Yes, look at this. Uh. Mm hmm. The machine made a perfect landing, but except for a few bullet holes in the fuselage, appeared to be undamaged. Yes, but this is the bit. The pilot attempted to set fire to the plane, but was secured before any damage could be done. It looks as if we're going to be lucky at last. Mm. Of course, it may be the old type. Yes, I know it may be, but if it isn't, this may be it. Yes? Speaking. You have? Good. How soon can you get it along? You bet I'll be waiting with my tongue out. This is the sort of tonic we've been needing. All right. I, I say, tell him to handle it gently. Well, it's the goods this time. A gun and two belts. That's swell. I tell you what, we'll get a quick something to eat and be back here by nine. They'll have it unloaded by then. Right. Well, I say, Harry. Yeah? Tell the lads on the gate to keep a man back to help with the unloading. Man gates, please. Now, Perkins speaking? Listen. There's Russ John just coming in. It's very confidential. Yes, I understand, sir. About nine o'clock. All right, sir, I'll see. Yes, there's a lorry man here now. I'll tell you what. All right, say goodbye. Oh. Well, Fred, see you in the morning, eh? Tonight, you mean? Eh? Fred, you've got to stay. Lorry to be unloaded. But tonight? Governor's got something special on. Well, so have I. My girl's waiting for me. It can't be helped. You've got to stay. Have I got time even to slip down and see her? Oh, I'm afraid not, Elf. What happened tonight, wouldn't it? Here, Jim, would you do us a favor? Sure, Alf. Look, Doris is waiting for me down at Jake's. Would you drop in on your way home and give her a message for me? Yeah, what is it? Well, would you tell her that I've got to stop round here and unload a ready lorry and I don't know how long I'll be, see? Okay. Uh, thanks, you don't mind, do you? Mind? It's a pleasure. Uh, no, I keep, no, I keep no funny business, mind you. What do you mean, funny business? Well, just you tell her that I'll be at the Red Lion around about nine o'clock if she wants to see me and then you buzz off, see? Don't worry, Alf. I won't do anything you wouldn't do. Uh, eh? Yeah, hey, what do you mean by that? Ask Doris tomorrow. Oh, shut up. See you tomorrow. Tonight, you mean? <laughs> What's his trouble? Doris. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. Hello, Jake. Nice cup of tea, please. Hello, Doris. Hello, Jim. I've come to take you to the pictures. He says I'll go with you. Out oh, there. That makes me laugh. I'm not kidding. He's working late. He asked me to keep you company. What if I don't believe it? But it's true, honest. Work it late. This time of night. Yes, really. I think it's hush-hush business. You know, they're doing a lot of that these days. Uh-huh. Hey, what about it, Jake? Do you think he's trying to put one over on you? Shouldn't put it past him. How she used to like blondes. Now, don't be silly, Doris. Don't be silly. As a matter of fact, do you keep this under your head? He's got to unload some special stuff that's arriving by lorry this evening. And it's important. Didn't he leave you a message? 
Well, he did say that you might be in the red line about nine o'clock this evening, but he doesn't expect you to wait that long. Okay, handsome, you win. What picture shall we go and see, huh? Don't worry, I shan't see much of it. Oh, my, my, fancy yourself a bit, don't you? It's not me, I fancy. Uh, hello? Okay, Jake? Yes. His name's Alf. He'll be at the red line about nine. Might be worth looking into. Name's Alf. Red line at nine. Right, I'll send someone down. We might pick up something. Get down to the red line at bottom. Be there tonight at nine. There's a man called Alf. He's the chatty guy. Well, coffee or no coffee, Mrs. Hampton, in 30 seconds, I must go back. I hate being alone in the house, miles from anywhere. Mm, about a hundred yards from anywhere. It's no laughing matter. I get scared stiff thinking of you sitting on top of all those shells and bombs and whatnot. Ah, snap out of it, darling. This may be the biggest thing that's ever happened to us. Really? Mm. Give us a kiss. Before you know where you are, I've come dashing into breakfast, having won the war or something. As long as you come back home, that's all I want. Hey, shall I tell you something? What? You're an old fuss boy. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, darling. Good shot. Thanks, Mike. Double six and I'm out. Oh. Uh, oh, right. oh, nice play. <laughs> Got your work cut out tonight, Charlie. Not off, I ain't. Evening, Elsie. Evening, Al. How are you? Oh, lovely, thanks. Same as you. <laughs> uh, mild a minute, please, dear. Uh, <clears throat> oh, yeah. Uh, make it two, will you, please? No, this is my alarm. Oh, that's very really nice of you. Three mild and bitters, please, miss. Oh, thanks so much. I see they've brought down another nausy plane. That's right, I've seen it. Hardly damaged at all. Go on. He's just driven up from down there with part of the plane's innards aboard. Go on. It's a fact. I've been helping unload it at the factory. Don't say. Sure. Well, done there. That's right. Well, good luck. <laughs> Elsie's in, Doris. No, I haven't. Very late for you to be around here, isn't it? Oh, I'd go back special for this job. If I was to tell you what they got down here, you'd be blabbing your heads off, wouldn't they, mate, eh? That's right. Of course, I'm not going to say nothing, but I'll tell you this much. Mr. Hampton's working down in the laboratory all night. Really? Mm. I bet his missus is none too pleased, either. <laughs> I wouldn't like my husband to go down there all night. Ah, uh, your husband wouldn't go. None of you was me, Elsie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really, Mr. Small? <laughs> Hello? Tom speaking. Did you get anything? Yes, I did. It's about that aeroplane that crashed today. They've taken something out of it. Well, we've got to get it back. But it's in the factory here now. Well, we've got to get into the factory. Meet me at the usual place right away. Well, now for it. There's an armed guard at the factory as well as the police. Won't be easy. You don't expect to find things easy in this job. Did you find out exactly where the stuff's been taken? Yes. It's in the laboratory. Block C. Laboratory? It means getting right inside. Do you think it's possible? It's got to be. We can't afford to fail. I think we'll find a way. All right, Mike. Switch them on. All right. Ruddy Colt. <laughs> Close friend. Here, look at this. Come on. That's done the trick. You deal with him. We'll see to the rest. Right. Come on, quick. Right, Put those lights out. I'm sorry, officer. But
Well, that's got it. Uh -huh. You know, it's a chance in a thousand us getting this intact. Smack in the eye of a master girl. And that poor Mrs. Hampton, too. Only been married a year, you know. I say she won't never get over it. It's a crime to think that things like that have got to happen. Yes, that's right. Then that job that Mr. Hampton was working on, that was of national importance, you know. That's gone, too. Go on. Yes. It's awful, isn't it? Horrible. You know what? Somebody talking too much. You can take my word for it. Mm. Why people can't keep things to themselves, I don't know. Makes you think, doesn't it? I'll have an hour of time, please. Oh, it's make it two. Makes you think, doesn't it? 